Every week on my LinkedIn live show, I get to speak to some amazing people. And this week is no exception. I get to speak to Gary Jones. Now, Gary Jones runs a company called Grow, and he helps people with podcasts. He does production, he does training, he helps produce them. In fact, this guy knows more about podcasting than I do about LinkedIn. And he's so generous with his advice and help. So basically today, all I did was just drill Gary with loads and loads of questions about LinkedIn. So jump on in. If you want to know about podcasting, if you want to know how easy it is, if you want to get started, if you want your own episode just like this, then listen into this episode because it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I thoroughly enjoyed chatting to Gary. Such a nice guy. And there's more. So we need to get him back, don't we? If you enjoy this episode, please subscribe. Please tell your friends. And uh, if you want any more advice and help, then check the show notes out because everything there is uh, pointing towards Gary. So without any further hesitation, here we go. Um, don't forget, this week, the song he chose was Good Riddance by Green Day. And that's the very first question that I normally ask, but I got it a bit wrong this week. Anyway, let's go. Gary Jones, good afternoon. How are you? I am all the best for seeing you. Thank you so much for playing that. That's ace. What a start to the show. It's, it's, it's a little bit different, isn't it? It's a little yeah. bit different. Right. Am I nervous or not? I don't know, because I've got the king of podcasting here on my show as a guest. So, Gary, tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do. So, hey, oh, folks. Whoa, 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 whoa. I forgot. The first question I always ask is, why did you choose that song? So nice and simply, that was the first Green Day song I heard when I was kind of growing up. And I'm a sucker for playing the guitar, sucker for acoustic guitars with voices. And it was something about the melody, the lyrics that kind of resonated. And listen to it being played takes me right back to the time when I was sitting on my bed, lying with headphones in, listening to it on repeat. So, yeah, just love it. It's a cracking song. Brilliant. Great, great choice as well. So thank you. I love the story. Okay, back to the script. (laughs) Tell us who you are and what you do. So, hey, folks. Um, so uh, my name's Gary Jones and I'm from a company called Grow. And we basically help people tell their story online through mainly the method of podcasting. So I started listening to podcasts years ago and I literally just fell into kind of talking to people, helping them to kind of do little bits about theirs. And guess what? I've carried on and I formed my own radio station a few years ago dedicated to different podcasts. And yeah spend my time now talking to people about editing podcasts, launching podcasts, becoming a guest on a podcast, basically anything they can do to help shout about themselves. Guess what? On podcasts. So that's me. Fantastic. Um, They're here to stay as well, aren't they? They've got a long, they've got a longevity. um, And to be fair, the spoken word is one of the oldest forms of communication. So it's not going anywhere. It's really not going anywhere. It's proven to be that. And to be fair, we've learned through, throughout the years through listening to stories around campfires and kind of listening to pa- traditions being passed down to generation and generation. I'd see podcasts as just an natural extension of that. So, yeah, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Right. So I've got the world's longest list of questions for you. Um, Emma's listening in. So um, I'm sure we're going to answer that question. Editing podcasts has always been what puts me off. So we're going to bust a load of myths today. But first of all, I like to know a little bit about what people are doing on LinkedIn. So why LinkedIn, Gary? So I've I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with LinkedIn, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, And the reason is um, LinkedIn, when I first started using it, which was probably about nine or 10 years ago, is, is a different beast to what it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, and right. I much prefer it is what it is now. Um, for me, social media is a good, it's just a different way of communicating with your customers, your clients, your audiences. So it's a communication method. And I love how LinkedIn makes it easy for people to do that now through lives just like this video, pictures, cameras, all loads of stuff. Um, but it was never used to be the case of that. You were very limited before of what you could do in terms of kind of interacting with your audience um, for a long time. So that's why I've got a love-hate relationship with it. Um, I love what it is now because now I can see it as a full interactive platform where one day you can go live. One day you can post kind of a PDF with all the jazz. You can do a video. Um, you've got all the different options there now. Yeah, no, it's absolutely superb. Okay. 
Have you got business from what you do on LinkedIn? Yes. Perfect. And do you post on any other platform? Yes, I do. Right. Which ones? Um, to be fair, I've posted. <laughs> I started off my social media's kind of career on Twitter and yeah, mainly Twitter. So I still post on Twitter, do a fair bit on Instagram. I say Instagram's probably my second platform, um, followed by Facebook, but the algorithm on Facebook has just been, has just pretty much sucked the life out of kind of pages, um, in my opinion anyway, and the region pages. So for me, Instagram's the other platform. Um, but yeah, LinkedIn, I, st- I think it's still got the edge. It's got the edge in terms of kind of the interactive nature. Yeah, no, I, 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 it's just a great platform, and it's, yeah. it's, it's done, it's done me proud. It's done me proud. Right, okay, let's get into mm. podcasting, sir. Let's get into podcasting. Why should we have a podcast? I tell you, I tell you what, let's play a game. I've never done a mm. podcast in my life before, and I sort of like bump into you at a party, and we start talking podcasting. So, yeah, what, what, what? Why should I have a podcast, then, Gary, for my small business? So first of all, a lot of people don't really know what a podcast actually is. Okay, so um, let's let's go back. So let's go let's go back because there's three different types of people who I talk to normally when I'm talk, talking about podcasts. People who have no idea what it is. So you mention the word podcast and they go, "Oh, okay, that's cool," but I have no idea. You know, you can wow. see they're dead behind the eyes. Um, okay. There's some people who kind of understand a little bit of it. They might have listened to a few, but they might have been a guest on one, but they, that's as far as their level is. Then there's people like you who get it, who know what it's about, who's got one, been a guest on a few other people's podcasts. So there's the different level. So let's break it down to the basic bones of it. And a podcast for the people who have no idea what a podcast is, is simply an audio file that you can listen to. It's as simple as that. It could be about anything. And there's millions of different topics, different podcasts out there for you to listen to and enjoy. The great thing about them is you can listen to them on pretty much any device you've got so on your mobile phone on your computer and you've probably got an app already downloaded on your phone like a apple podcast or spotify so you can listen to it free of charge and the good thing about these podcasts is unlike videos where you have to actually be static to enjoy it you have to be sitting down somewhere or you can listen to a podcast anywhere so you can listen to it when you're driving when you're working out when you're walking the dog in the office wherever you want so if you put that into a business context, you can reach your customers, you can reach your clients, you can reach your audience anywhere. You're not bound by what they're doing or how much time they've got or you know the technology they've got around them. You can reach your audience. So straight away, that's a really powerful tool for any business to be able to reach that. And also, we all know the kind of no like, trust kind of cycle. You've got to know someone to like them and all that kind of jazz before you buy them. If you've got a podcast and you're releasing it t- for free of charge every week in, week out, or month in, month out, talking to different people, giving loads of insights, giving loads of value, what a great way of accelerating that no light trust cycle. No, so that's just two examples, you know, you're reaching your customers anywhere, building that no light trust cycle. But honestly, there's loads. There's loads of benefits for a small business to have a podcast. Okay. So that that's great. I'm sold on that. But surely I'm going to have to have the world's most expensive microphone i'm going to need to go into a studio i'm going to have to have high powered headphones and stuff like that what what kit do i need to get started please gary so effectively you need two bits to get started on podcasting something to record content on and something to release on okay that's literally it now funny enough your mobile phone could well be decent enough to physically start it So technology isn't a barrier. You don't need thousands of pounds worth of equipment just for it to get dusty in the corner, just like that golf set that you never used or that triathlon bike you you rode twice or or that guitar, you know, that you spent two grand on, you know, whatever it is, you know, everyone's got their own kind of little bit that's just stashed somewhere that they don't use. Podcasting equipment doesn't have to be that. Um, So technically, you don't need, you literally just have to have something to record it on and that's kind of your job lot. Um, When I started recording my own podcast i had two weeks um to basically create a podcast it was for a radio station so basically they uploaded a podcast and played it at a certain time and called it a radio show which is cool that's perfectly fine um but i had two weeks and all i had was my mobile phone to start with that's all i literally had um so i downloaded an app and i literally interviewed people 
um, with my mobile phone going, with my mobile phone kind of here in my hand going, this is me, then to you, then to me, then to you. It did the job. Was it perfect? No. But it did the job. And that was eight or nine years ago. Technology has improved so much between now and then that actually a mobile phone is a simple way of doing it. So to answer your question, no, you don't need any technology really to do it. Um, you just need something to record it on. And funny enough, mobile phone or computer means that you can edit it as well if you want to. But again, even that's not a stumbling block because I know people who don't edit the podcasts. Which again, absolutely fine. It all depends on what you want to do. The yeah. main thing is you can get started relatively quickly, relatively cheaply. But the big thing for any businesses that need to kind of start a podcast isn't the technology. It's not kind of how to edit it or anything like that. They're just stuff to get hung up on for them to procrastinate on. They've got to work on the idea and make sure that idea is absolutely sound, absolutely rock solid. They know who they're targeting, all that kind of stuff. That's going to be the biggest thing that's going to stop people from doing it. Okay. So that's great. So I've got a mobile phone. And and so my mobile phone today is an awful lot newer than yours was nine years ago or, or, or the, what it is. So the technology has come on. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. I can find an app. So that's good. Um, so let's just say I have a LinkedIn business um, and I want to start a podcast. Do you know what? You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can do pretty much what you're doing. You can invite Definitely. people who you want to have a chat with. And to be fair, everybody starts with talking to their mates, talking to the people in their kind of close circle, because that's how you that's who feels comfortable with you. You feel comfortable with them um, and they're not afraid to just to help you out. So you kind of if you're going to start it from there and you've got a business on LinkedIn and it could be an accountancy practice, it could be a HR company, it could be a coach, whatever it is. Um, you kind of go to maybe two or three different people. And say, look, I've got this idea for a podcast. We want to talk about this. I want to showcase you as a guest. And our audience is this. And this is what they want to, kind of, we want them to share. We want them to get this content. We want, I'd love you to share this with them. Um, choose a time and date. You can jump on Zoom, jump on StreamYard, jump on Riverside, wherever you want to jump onto. So geographical boundaries is nothing now in terms of kind of podcasting. That was another barrier that kind of, got busted during lockdown and all that kind of stuff. But then you jump on and you record it. And it can be as simple as that. If you go live like this, then you've got a double bite of the kind of the engagement cherry because technically you've got people joining us live today and talking and hearing us from there on YouTube, LinkedIn and kind of other places. Then you release it. So people who can't watch it live can do that. That's pretty much how you start. It's, it, it, it's not that complicated all it is is another process to fit into your business but it's got to fit into the business and it can't be just an extra because if it's an extra when times are tough or times are hard or you haven't got energy those extras get cut so it's got to be properly in terms into your business okay great got that so would it be better to do a live show like we're doing and then turn it into a podcast or would it be better to just go for a podcast good question it depends on you and your guests. And what I mean by that is the thought of live going live for some people fills them with absolute dread. Uh, because what if I say the wrong, you know, like things like what will if what if I say the wrong thing? Or actually, podcasts should be audio. Why am I doing video? It makes no sense. You know, you know, there's loads of other kind of objections for going live. Um, but for the people who and for those people who don't want to go live. That's fine. Recording a podcast, just doing an audio or going on doing it and video, perfectly good. And that's cool. And that's up to them. Um, but for the people who want to go live, personally, I love that because you're giving your audience a chance to interact live during the actual things. So actually, you know, we might get a question that could completely throw me. I don't think it will. But, you know, you don't know what you're going to get in terms of doing that. It means from you, you're interacting with your audience, you're giving value, and you're saying to them, hey, come on, come on in. Come and listen to this. Be part of it. Which is great. So I love live, but it's not for everyone. And if it's not for you, if it's not for the person who's watching, that's okay. Just record. Well, I say it's not even just record audio, record video. 
if you record a video, you can obviously repurpose it in different places. You can make clips of it. You can put it on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So it has got that kind of value, but it's not for everyone. And not all of my clients do live and not all my clients do video. Some just do audio. And again, that's perfectly good for them. Some people start with audio, move into video. Again, it's down to you, down to your personal preference. Brilliant. I love that because, and that, that's the thing, isn't it? It's not a case of you have to do this. There's there's so much flexibility. So if I'm watching this right now and I'm sort of like thinking, well, I don't know what this StreamYard is or Riverside or anything else, but I use Zoom. Could I, Could would, would Zoom work for me? Yeah, of course it will. Of course it will. It, all of them just provide you a platform where you can interact with your guests, inter okay. interact with someone. Um, each of them have got different kind of features, um, such as audio kind of, you can, yeah, audio background suppression um, in terms of editing tools um, and all that kind of stuff. But effectively, all they're doing is allowing you to talk to someone from an outside place. Um, again, it's about finding the right one that works for you. I'm a big fan of using StreamYard, which we're on now. Um, I love how easy it is to customize and brand it and kind of put stuff in and put kind of little letters going down the bottom and all that kind of jazz. I like that. Um, but everyone's got their own personal kind of preference. But Zoom, if you feel comfortable on it, that for me would be the main thing is using the platform that you feel comfortable on. So if you're happy using Zoom or dare I say it Teams, do it. Yeah. Do it. It's better to get started than to kind of, think to yourself oh i need to download Streamyard, but i don't know how to use it you might as well just get started on zoom and then go from there fantastic this is brilliant i'm gonna start a podcast <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know what it's all good and, and, and this is and this is the thing right is when i first started i thought podcasting was complicated and difficult and all of that sort of malarkey which is why i'm, I'm gr grateful for you coming on today and, and answering all these questions um so I found somebody that I can talk to. So is it best to do um, an interview type um, show or is it best for me to just rattle on about what I know? Um, it all depends on what you want, what you want to achieve with your podcast and what your audience wants to kind of do, wants to listen to. Um, with you talking just to camera, there's a shelf life of about 15, 20 minutes where even if you're the most engaging speaker, people could get bored of one just one voice um, and people will start to kind of drift in and out. So having two voices straight away is great or two or more voices because you get that different change in voices, you get different questions, you get that interaction. Um, if you look at the top 10 podcasts on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, nine times out of 10, they're all interview based because inherently people are nosy. People want to feel like they're sitting in with in front of two people who just having a chat and just listen to it people yeah you know, and when i say people are nosy i'm nosy you know i'm happy to say that but it's a case of you like to listen into different people's conversations and this and this is what you know this is why interaction and interview style works really well there are a number of different kind of formats to podcast i've got five different ones that i talk about um and but interview based is the truly the the number one in terms of interaction now that's not to say if you've got a podcast, you just have to do interview ones all the time. You can mix it up with a few solo shows if you want to. And that's quite cool to kind of get your side or get your point or get your tips or whatever it is across. But I don't believe it should be one or the other all the time. I think it's nice to have that mix. And yeah, and just really kind of from an audience point of view, I know when I'm listening to podcasts, I love listening to podcasts as well as kind of editing them and also being on them and i can mix i like one show being a bit shorter so i can quickly digest that and then another show being a lot longer and that's where having solo shows and interviews can make a yeah give you a nice mix in terms of a listening as a listener brilliant okay so is there an optimum time for a podcast yeah there's been loads of research loads of people spending lots of money trying to develop this answer um and depending on what school of thought, some people will say no, not at all. Some people will say actually 28 minutes is a figure that some people kind of throw out. For me, it's you've got to base it on your audience. So if you know your audience um, has got really short attention spans or has got a school run that they're going to, which is 20 minutes, guess what? You're going to do your content for 20 minutes because that's how long your customer potentially has got 
to do it out. Um, but you've got other people who have got podcasts for hour, two hours, three hours, that kind of stuff. I take the approach that people are clever enough to be able to pause a podcast and start it up again if when they finish. So if you're into a podcast and you're into that topic or that guest or that kind of interviewer, guess what? You'll listen to it for as long as you kind of want to, and then you'll kind of go back to it. Um, so you might do it in a couple of sittings, but you will listen to that show. So in all honesty, the duration is based, for me anyway, on the audience and also how much time you've got. If you've got enough time just to do a 20-minute podcast, just do a 20-minute podcast. If you've got a couple of hours, do it. But, yeah, I'd say your audience and how much time you've got spent. There's not an exact science to it. Um, you've got to base it on those. Okay. So I've got my guest. I've got my kit. Uh, I've got my Zoom. I'm happy with all of that. I've got some questions that I've written out ready for the guest. Yep. I've recorded it all. What do I do now, Gary? So I've, all got, you... I've got an MP3 file. What do I do with that? So you've got an MP3 file, which is probably just you talking to someone um, about it. There's two ways to do it after this. Um, you can either edit it and kind of take out the ums and yars and put music at the start of it or do a le- little intro like you do on yours. Um, you can do that. You can put sponsors in and you can put kind of different bits to kind of almost kind of flounce it up and fit it out and make it sound more professional. You could do that. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And hell, I built a business around that, so I can't knock it. But you could actually just put that MP3 file and put it onto a podcast host. And the job of that podcast host um, is to then send it out to all of these different places like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, which isn't actually a thing anymore, Amazon Music, all that kind of stuff. Um, all you have to do is upload the one file and they'll do it all. And these are places like Spotify Spotify for Business, Anchor, Podbean, you know, Buzzsprout. There's loads. There's loads out there. But effectively, the job after you've actually recorded it is to edit it and put the different stuff on it and then release it. And everyone's got their own kind of different views on editing, if they want to do it, if they don't want to do it. For me, if you're going to edit it, it shouldn't sound edited. It should just sound like a natural conversation. So I keep editing to an absolute minimum if we can, uh, because ultimately you want it to sound still like a conversation between a couple of people. And when it comes to releasing it raw and unfiltered and all that kind of stuff, do you know what? That's all good. And I'd say the longer the podcast, the easier it is to do that kind of format because Editing takes time. It doesn't matter how yeah. way, whichever way you want to listen to it and what, which way you want to play it. Editing does take time. And no one set up a business or set up a podcast to do the editing. No one did that. They, they're there to enjoy the content that they're recording. No, fantastic. So Emma's come up with a great question. So pa- Pavel asked the same question I asked, um, so optimal duration. And Emma's asked, do you have to have it listed on all the platforms? Okay, so um, when you say all the platforms, there's probably about 200 podcast platforms that people listen to it. That'll be Um, no then. (laughs) Probably not, because what you probably find is that there's kind of the big five or big six kind of platforms that they do. The big two, however, is Apple Podcasts and Spotify. They're the two big ones. Amazon Music are kind of growing up. Google Podcasts was up there. iHeart in America is kind of up there as well. But Apple Podcasts and Spotify, the two platforms you've got to have it on um, because that's where people listen to it. Not including and fast ranking going up the rankings, um, YouTube as well for YouTube podcasts as well. They are flying and obviously being second biggest search engine, you'd pull it on there, wouldn't you? Because it makes... As an SEO point of view, it makes sense. For supplying links, it makes sense. Hey, if you're going live like this, you go live on there as well. Happy days. And it's now got a podcast button. Why wouldn't you? So I would make sure if I was launching a podcast today, put it onto Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Amazon Music, and then the rest of them, just get the podcast host just to kind of flit it down. And and you can do all that from Buzzsprout, Spotify for uh, podcasters. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, I say it like that because Apple Podcasts, you actually have to have an Apple ID and go through that process. Okay. Um, 
but you still need somewhere for it to draw the information from. So you need that Buzzsprout, that Podbean to start off with, and then you get to Apple Podcast. And it usually takes around 24 hours, 48 hours for them to kind of make sure all the artwork is okay, make sure all the episodes are good and that they're not breaking any rules, and then you're good to go. I mean, but really, okay. is once you set it up, set those links up, it's done, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, and, and you do get into a habit because it, so so this this show goes out live, and then what I do as soon as I've finished, I, so at the moment I've got some soundproof boards in my shed and it's all set up. I've got my headphones plugged in, I've got my mic plugged in. I go and have my lunch, and then when I finish my lunch, I come in, I I do a little intro because it's fresh in my mind. So today I've spoken to Garen, we talked about podcasting, so that goes on the intro. I cut out my song. Um, and then I uh, cut out the song at the end and put in a little bit of a thank you. That's my podcast. I upload it. It really doesn't take me long because I'm used to doing it. So that's great. Hmm. OK, so I've done my podcast. I've got my guest. I've edited it as much as I want to. I've put an intro. I've put an outro. That's all fine. I've got it uploaded up, up to um, Apple and, and, and the, the, the Trinity that you said. Mm -hmm. So. What's the best way to launch this podcast? Now, should I have like five or 10 in the bag and launch them all one by one? Or should I just start and then do that? And so what's the best way to launch this podcast that I've just spent hours recording? Oh, and that's the million dollar question, because that all depends on your what is it, what else is happening in your business at that time, if it's a business related podcast. So um, and also depends on how much time you've got going forward as well. Um, so. Typically, if you've got an interview-based kind of podcast, um, it's always best to launch it with a couple to start off with. So people can listen to, let's say, the first one, enjoy it. Then they fancy, oh, okay, let's listen to the second one, maybe the third one. So I always recommend starting with kind of three to start off with. Um, if it's a kind of more of a course base or a solo episode or it, each episode kind of run into another one, you won't want to watch, launch it Netflix, Netflix style where you launch all six or all 12 all in one go. So people can literally go from one to another one to another one. Um, and they're normally better for educational kind of based podcasts. Um, or if you're going to be talking to people and teaching them a particular topic. But then it also then has to fit into your business goals and your marketing strategy. Because if let's say you know you're launching... A podcast one week but then also you've got a nude website being launched you've got a blog that week and you've got yeah a book and or a call yeah you know, you've got all this stuff happening people know that actually that their audiences online can only really focus on one key message at each time at one time so launching all those in one go isn't going to work launching a weekly podcast isn't going to work at that point so that's where actually you could adjust it and go well actually if i've got six episodes planned in and recording they're all edited all ready to go let's just drop it let's just drop it and get it out there and then people can start doing it otherwise you can kind of pick, filter it through but also one thing to consider is how much time you've got after you've launched it so if you know you've got a really couple, busy couple of months and you've got no content going out between now until you know three months time and then you've got another block to record your podcast for it's probably best not to drop all six episodes and then just it's probably better then to release it and drip feed it out. So there's no hard and short correct answer to that question. Um, it all depends on what's happening, both in terms of your marketing strategy and also the type of content it is. Um, for me, I think it's best to spread out the content if need be. Um, so you've so your audience and your listener base gets used to an episode being released every week or you going live every Tuesday at half 12, whatever it is. You know, people like that familiarity and that consistency. Um, so that's probably best. But equally, I'm not adverse to dropping six episodes all in one go if I've got another couple waiting in the background to kind of release afterwards. A very fluffy answer, but that's a big question. No, no, no. It, it, and that's the thing. It's, 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 it's finding it and working it out right. Um, that is the quickest interview I've ever done. We've, we've run out of time already. What questions haven't I asked, Gary? Because Oh, good know. question. Um, we've touched, to be fair, we've covered a lot of topics. Very, yes, very skimmed. We skimmed yeah. a lot of topics. Um, we, 
I alluded to it at the start, but what makes a good podcast in terms of what content makes a good co- podcast? Um, we haven't spoken about becoming a guest on a podcast and the benefits of that because there's loads of other stuff to do it. Um, but the main things I talk about is the launch process and kind of the making it as simple as possible. So breaking down the processes into its bare bones, which I think we've covered well. Okay. Are you going to come back on and we'll do those? I'm done straight. If you'll yeah. have me back, I'll be back in the heartbeat. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. This has been absolutely superb. Um, you know, it's it's and, and I've had to work all this out myself. But there's people listening now that are sort of like, ah, excellent. So, okay, I've got all this, I've got some ideas. I want someone to hold my hand. Can you do that, Gary? Yes. Okay, so how do we get hold of you? So effectively, find me on LinkedIn. I'm the guy with, who's got a bald head and a beard, so I've got an upside down head, and I'm going like this in the profile picture that's all you need to know my name's gary jones there's a few out a few of us out there but i'm the only person with this kind of look upside so down head. Happy with that. upside down head i'll take i that. love it i um, love it and yeah find me on that i offer everybody who i meet a free 20 minute conversation about um podcasting so have a chat and we've been talking for a half hour we've covered all of this kind of stuff 20 minutes one-to-one you can actually talk about lots of focus stuff yeah, um, and give you loads of tips so yeah let's have a chat let's get you booked in for a free 20 minute one on one and then go from there fantastic so if you are listening to us on the podcast all of that information is in the is in the notes um emma's just said that was brill so i wonder if emma's going to be releasing a podcast wouldn't that be great to know that mm. know that someone's doing that right i've got one more question for you not related to podcasting or it might be depending on the answer but before we do that i'm just gonna go in and uh find my guest next week and <laughs> I want you to tell me what um, she's holding in her hands. This is uh, PJ Livett. She's coming in to talk about relationships and such education. Um, so I met her at a, at a function recently and she had those things with her. So any idea what they she might be holding? But bearing in mind, we want to keep this clean. <laughs> I was going to say, it looks like it could actually, do you know what? It looks like a kind of little cuddly toy, which is a worm. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's kind of where my mind's we, gone with that. Isn't, isn't we've kind of we've kept this ep- we've kept this episode clean, so that's perfect. So <laughs> one of those jellyfish kind of soft toys. Yeah. That's what it looks like. I know it's yeah. not, but that's what it looks it's like to me. Def- it's definitely not, and um, yeah, it's it's very funny, and I cannot wait to have a chat with her next week. I think I'm going to have to hit the button that says, "Is this?" Oh, there's a button, isn't there, that you click? Explicit. It, yeah. Explicit. So I think next week's show might be a little <laughs> bit, um, but we'll see how we get around that. Gary, you've been absolutely superb. My final question to you is what advice would you give your 16 year old self oh um it's a good question do you know what it was probably actually to trust my instincts and to be more confident that's probably kind of because at 16 i was really shy yeah I didn't say boot to a goose um and i did a lot of growth between 16 and 20 so to actually just say to them it's gonna be all right trust your instincts and just go for it not be afraid of what people think Biggest advice. Brilliant. Gary, thank you. You've been an absolute star. Thank you to everybody for all your, your questions. And um, yeah, let's see if we get some more podcasts out of this one. Thanks ever so much, Gary. Cheerio. Cheers. Here we go. Another podcast in the bag. I've been Ashley Leeds. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear more, then please subscribe and I will see you again another day. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to catch up. If you fancy being a guest on one of my shows, I do live shows on LinkedIn twice a week, but I also plan to do some real podcasts uh, where we just do audio and probably record it to go on the YouTube channel. And we can talk about absolutely anything in those. So whatever you want to do, get in touch. And thank you for listening. You get out what you put in. Never going to lose, never going to win. Long as you're happy, you're always going to grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in.